This is the Brilliantly Branded Podcast, a safe place to have a voice and talk about branding and all the reasons that bring a brand to be brilliantly branded. I am your host, Maria Lucia Romero, a woman empowering other women, and I am welcoming you to this journey of learning and inspiration to build awareness around the world of business and the world of brands. This is the Brilliantly Branded Podcast. You cannot miss this episode. This time, our guest is Juliana Bayona. She is working in the tech industry and she is passionate of women empowerment. She shares her exciting plans to infuse her big corporate environment as a director at PwC with initiatives aimed at empowering women. We had a conversation about her journey through her career, where she's actively shaping the tech landscape. What sets her apart is her commitment to supporting women in tech. Her vision is all about women supporting women to achieve greater results, and we couldn't agree more realizing the alignment between her objectives and our purpose at the Brilliantly Branded Community. As well, she shared her commitment as a member of Girls in Tech Luxembourg, where she's promoting knowledge and providing essential tools for women looking to excel in the tech world. So this episode will remind you of the incredible impact we can make when we lift each other up as a woman. As I always said, feel comfortable, bring your best drink, and enjoy this episode with us. So welcome one more time to the Brilliantly Branded Podcast. Welcome to another episode of the Brilliantly Branded Podcast. As well, for all those that are listening for the first time or for all that have been listening to the podcast continuously, uh, they already know that I have decided to build a community for women empowerment through the lens of branding. So the thing is the Brilliantly Branded now is not just the podcast, the Brilliantly Branded now is a community as well. So this is a, a general invitation if you are a woman that share the philosophy of women have not to compete against each other, women have to support and go together towards a purpose. Uh, if you love that and you want to enlighten and support other women, please join us. So today the most important thing is introduce our guest and we invite a woman that have a lot to share but the most importantly is related with women empowerment as well and all the support that she has been providing across her career. So I am not going to spoil more information and we'll let her introduce herself. So welcome, Juliana Bayona. So please, could you introduce yourself? First and all, the, thank you, Maria Lucia, for inviting me to your brilliant podcast. Thank you. Uh, I'm very happy to be here. Uh, so I am um, a system engineer uh, who has been working uh, since more than 20 years uh, in different areas and specifically lately in consulting, technology consulting uh, matters. Um, why I am here today is because as part of my journey, I realized at some point that being a woman in technology areas is not very easy. We have many challenges to face when we realize and when we start facing these situations where we are at some point a minority. And of course, uh, we have to be aware that not everywhere is easy to uh, link the technology topic with women. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I don't have a specific explanation, or maybe I have a very long, probably, <laughs> series of, of, of thoughts about it. But uh, this, is, this is my uh, story. I realized that I have been facing this situation. And that's why, since last year, I have started uh, dedicating some personal time to help to break this uh, imbalance, to help more women to feel empowered in technology topics. 
to help to attract more women because actually the problem is at different stages is at the sourcing meaning where we have girls or young women or university students uh, willing to get into technology jobs or areas uh, then we have other situations that is when a woman started a technology career how they feel empowered and motivated to go farther into more lead leadership roles. Wow. So different situations around it that made me uh, think that uh, there is something to do that we can do outside to help to uh, improve, to have a positive impact and improve the number of women and the quality of this experience of women working in technology. Wow, it's, it's incredible, especially because you are living that. So you have been part of that. You have been uh, during your career, probably struggling some points where you have been seeing that you are a minority and that's pushed you to do something and something really important. Part of the things that I have heard that you are doing and part of, of those initiatives is being part of the girls in tech Luxembourg. So I will love you to tell us a bit more about your journey and how you got involved with this initiative that is amazing. And I guess you are going to talk about more details about that later on. But can you can you let us uh, uh, more details about that, please? Sure. So that started uh, last year uh, with my where my curiosity curiosity about learning more and understanding more about a woman. Uh, and, and, and woman, woman issues into technology and business areas. And there I found this opportunity to join a Girls in Tech Association, which, which was uh, actually launched last year. And uh, it was in a very early stage. And I could take a role to help the team that was working on the association to start setting up well actually they have done already an amazing job i have to say because it's, it's yeah they are an amazing uh, team of uh, girls <laughs> indeed uh and that uh yes uh, of course has be motivated me a lot to uh give more of my my free time and energy for this purpose i i feel that what we are doing uh providing more opportunities to network taking uh, or giving more opportunities for women to get equipped <laughs> both in technical topics or uh, or also uh, soft skills areas yeah. uh, it's 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 amazing it's, it 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 is worthy to to spend the time wow that that explanation and that mission that you have in girls in tech is something really uh, to enhance you know it's something to enlighten Uh, because, you know, sometimes uh, when we dedicate our free time with a purpose, I think it has even more value because you have a big, big responsibility in your role and uh, you are working in a, one of the big companies uh, around the world and you need to be uh, responsible for your position on all the things that you are doing around So I guess that part of the things uh, that you are doing are relating as well uh, your activity in the women empowerment in the company that you are working for right now? Indeed, indeed, all is connected. And actually, I think it's, it's when this, um, this starts, when this, this uh, uh, idea of start working for women starts, I think it brings a lot of positive things around and not only uh, around the association, but also uh, internally at my office. Um, so as I started working with the association and I had the chance to uh, connect and to be more close to the problematics, uh, then I realized as well uh, that, you know, it, it's not only me, that also many of my colleagues, uh, women colleagues, uh, might be struggling about this. And that actually, that actually makes me... Uh, create this objective of I want more balanced uh, population or at least more balanced team at leadership levels. Uh, today uh, is my, my case. Uh, I am director and I have to say that I am basically the only woman attending 
some meetings that happen at the direct di- directive level. Directive wow, level. that yeah. is amazing. <laughs> yes. I will be out of 20 people, I would be the only one woman wow. in this position. And of course, it's I'm not talking to about all the departments. This is specifically in the department I am, which is r- rendering technology consulting services. Okay. But uh, it's, it's, it's a fact and it's something that, yes, we should change. I would okay. love to have more, to have had more uh, women role, role models in my career. And now it becomes my mission to, to be that role model for some of the girls that are working here and mm-hmm. to help them to identify these situations, to get more aware and to handle the same more proactively. Uh, okay. any of these issues that could f- make them feel uh, insecure or demotivated mm-hmm. uh, when performing technology jobs. For so, all those that are wondering, well, uh, they are talking about a big company and this and that. Would you like to share where are you working, what are your position and all this a little bit more details? <laughs> <laughs> Yes, of course. I think that that's not Thank a you. problem at all. Um, I work at PwC. I am a director in a technology advisory. Um, and yes, I have started a woman in tech uh, program internally. Wow. And uh, I have to say that uh, so far uh, it has been very positive. Uh, I have gotten the support of the PwC top management as they also see there is a good purpose aligned with the mission of the company, but also uh, internally the reception, the, um, the the impact that is having this activity is 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 making the things to flow uh, yeah. on the on the right direction. It's mm. a good moment to to make the change. I think uh, something is happening in the world these days that also are ha- are helping us to, to, to be more visible and to be more aware and yeah, why not yeah, that's something true. else to change it. Yeah, mm-hmm. that that's true and, and I really want to congratulate you in public because uh, be part of these initiatives and take it action to do something related with that topic is part of the things that I am doing as well. So we are aligned and I know that we can do many things together. I'm so happy that you are here today and are letting us and to our listeners all the things that you are uh, part of. And one of the things that I want to ask you is what are those plans that you have to really grow this community or to support this community inside of the company? You can share some of those initiatives that you are going to start. Yes, uh, of course. So what we, what I am planning uh, is to create a series of workshops. So along this year, we will provide um, different uh, sessions that tackle the gaps or issues that we have discussed with all the community. Um, mm-hmm. We have started by uh, having a sharing and discovery session where everyone was able to uh, express how they feel, what were the main challenges they were facing in a day-to-day basis. And uh, based on the results of this workshop, uh, we just prioritize what could be, you know, what's, what is the, the most uh, frequent situations and how we can help, you know, all of us to, yes. uh, to, to get better prepared to face or to avoid getting oh, wow. into this, into, into, into this. So, um, what are we doing? Uh, what, what I, what, what is the plan is to, uh, invite, uh, some, um, people who have gone through these careers to share uh, also tips and tricks uh, that helps, again, creating more awareness and uh, getting more ideas on about how, uh, yeah, how this, this, this can happen to everyone yes. and how challenges do not necessarily should block you uh, on, with your objective of get somewhere far away in your, in your career. Yeah, that, that's that's one thing. The other thing is we have some specific trainings that are probably more oriented either to some technology topics. If there are women that wants to 
that, that feels they have a gap or wants to get more equipped on technology topics. Or, uh, yes, uh, we, we are also uh, working on leadership and other soft skills uh, areas. So yeah. here is coming, for example, uh, personal branding. Yeah. What you are actually doing. <laughs> Uh, it, I love it, that you are talking about that because that <laughs> was my my next question. Like I wanted to ask you, I want to ask you. <laughs> well, yeah. Indeed, it's it's interesting because uh, when we discuss about uh, our community about what are one of the main topics or differences or issues or disadvantages, I don't know how you want to call it, but um, something that make us feel different uh, to men is the, the this empowerment this confidence to introduce ourselves to yeah. talk about what we do well yeah and to position our, ourselves in uh, any situation and specifically because we are talking about women working in technology that means this needs to happen with a uh, with audience or groups that are normally mm, dominated by by men Hmm? Yeah. So, uh, because it's true that also we feel different when we are the majority, you know, and when we are with a group of women, we can express easier. So, it, it's it's interesting. It happens, and I think it happens the, independently of the gender. But uh, yes, there is something that we can see. It's more common, and uh, that was what we noted during the the, the, the workshop. So we're yeah. going to be working on personal marketing topics. We will be also working on uh, woman leadership and uh, identifying, uh, understanding better personalities yeah. and uh, understanding exactly which are these points of attention of each of us mm -hmm. that we just need to be aware of and consider to be more prepared and to just, uh, let's say, be more positive in the coming interactions and. Um, yeah, helping to, to feel more comfortable in, in any situation, no matter what is the the, yeah. the, the number of, 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 of women or men we have in the room, right? Yeah, the thing, and thank you for sharing that, because I think it's something um, lovely, you know, is knowing that you are building all the things around and you are actually listening and giving a voice to the women inside of the organization and not just in the organization, you are doing uh, outside as well and the thing is how things as you mentioned personal branding and bringing the mentors and building the coaching process to acquire the soft skills and all these things are coming together to really empowering us to really give us the power that we need because it's true that when we are in the male dominated industry sometimes and I have been there we feel a bit uh, you know intimidated because of something as well, actually, the female energy and the male energy are very different, are complementary. I, uh, I agree with these kind of things. I am not just going just for one kind of energy. But when you have that balance and actually your environment is supporting you, is giving to you this power and is giving to you all these tools that you are providing, this is really something that is, is going to make a, a, a big impact. Um, and other things that um, uh, people in the podcast, I mean, our listeners are asking for, is a little bit of uh, the things in the in the personal life. So I'm going to do something like a personal questions. And having um, arriving where you have been arriving in the professional life, for example, um, that means that you have some rituals or some habits in your in your personal life that uh, help you to to stay motivated and productive. So, can you share a personal habit or routine that you believe uh, have been contributed to this success? Yes, of course. So, it's not always easy to maintain the routine. But exercise is vital, vital to keep your head and your physical state in, a, in the best shape to cope with all the challenges. Uh, so I love exercising and uh, I, do, uh, I do practice yoga. I do from time to time my gym uh, with a, a coach and uh, I love also going to work, uh, especially on the forest doing hiking. Uh, eventually, it's also something that 
energizes uh, my myself a lot. So this, uh, in addition to having, of course, the social time to share with friends and uh, with your partner to disconnect a little bit from the day to day. This is, uh, I think this is for me what I need to, to keep going on with all the the... Wow. <laughs> you know, the next question will be, uh, when do you do all those things? Because, you know, working, having all these responsibilities, you know, this, this position that you have, uh, doing the, the, the personal thing and stuff to keep this balance. I personally have been found that a bit struggle sometimes. So I don't know if you have uh, some other advice to all these people that is listening to say, well, do you know, to keep this balance? And in one of the episodes, one of my guests said, no, I am not managing. I am, I am a juggling. <laughs> so I was just imagining <laughs> doing this kind of thing. It's amazing. But I don't know, you can share something with us. Uh, it, it is completely right what you're saying. Uh, I mean, juggling is a very good word to express what we need to do if we want to continue and keep that balance. But, you know, at the end, you realize that um, it's up to you to give the priority to this type of activities and to secure the space in the agenda. Hmm. Um, of course, doesn't mean that you will make it 100% of the time. There is always a room for flexibility or emergencies. Yeah. But what um, I realize is that uh, if... If if you think that by doing more, you know, and working harder, uh, you know, things will be more efficient and you will be better, uh, it's, it's not true. Actually, by making these stops, this taking these breaks and taking care of yourself to be in the, in the, in the good shape you need, then you keep also more efficient, you actually bring better things because you have good energy and the energy you need actually to make the things happen every day so yeah yeah that's yeah that's true important. yeah that's mm -hmm. true thank you for sharing because it's it's very true you know it's sometimes we think that working more and and uh, doing more things at the same time we are going to be more efficient and happen that this really reduce our our performance because we are not really uh, be focused in one thing and really taking care of ourselves, our energy, and all the things that really bring this balance into our lives. Continue with this uh, one one other question that I wanted to ask you, and basically this is for aspiring women in tech. That is part of the things that you are doing, and and I know that they are listening to this podcast. Uh, what advice would you give them on how to? navigate the industry because you know you have been talking about this your career all the things that you have been a struggle with and how they can actually create their own path of success both professionally and personally with all the things that we have been uh, talking about very interesting question uh i would love to have the magical formula <laughs> hmm. uh, i i am i'm sure uh, it's not the same for everyone but um, there are a few things that are essential to, to get there. And then as long as you know what you want, you know, you, you're sure you're passionate about the idea and uh, you put, you know, this as a priority and then you put the focus and uh, the energy that needs to be achieved. And then uh, third, you combine, you know, this good attitude. I mean, you are proactive and you don't let yourself to be blocked by the different challenges that you will face in a day to day. You're able to analyze, learn and move ahead, move forward. So that is, is going to be for sure, I think, enough to, to go, go for what you want and, and achieve success. Yeah. So, you... And I think it's not only for technology, it's for all the areas. Yeah. But you need to know on the techy areas is, of course, um, it depends on what is the topic you want to work on. Uh, there is a high level of competitiveness. And, uh, of course, uh, there is a subject that is quite specific, like any other matter. So being an expert and uh, being prepared to have discussions with experts is very important because yeah. 
that will also catch or lose the attention and the momentum with the different people you are talking about this this these topics. So yeah, correct. Yes, but normally that naturally comes with that patient if you have a real interest, and of course you you will get to to get the knowledge you need. And it's also interesting uh, to say that sometimes, and here it comes back to the subject of women in tech or girls in tech. Sometimes yeah. uh, women think, you know, this is this sounds like so difficult. This technology is not for us, or yeah, AI, or uh, all, all these interesting uh, terms Topics. that are coming every day. <laughs> yeah. And in fact, it's not the case. I think uh, it's a, it's about um, being aware that the world is changing, that now there are much more opportunities to learn. This is what the community now is doing. For example, Girls in Tech is opening uh, many uh, spaces to discuss and to learn, to get equipped, and not only on uh, soft skills, but also on tech techy topics. Yeah. Um, for example, this uh, in the, the coming weeks we are giving some workshops for family that is AI, AI intelli artificial intelligence workshops mm -hmm. that intends to attract and to get the give the opportunity to kids and their parents to spend some time together while learning playing and learning about AI and uh, as this type of workshops are happening. We have workshops also uh, focused to different uh, ages and different interests. So um, yeah, uh, it, it's a matter of what each one wants to learn. Look around because there are so many things happening and many opportunities uh, as, as Girls in Tech. There are other associations also promoting uh, and giving um, uh, learning um, capacity or learning uh, tools <laughs> tools <laughs> learning yes tools. yes yeah. yeah okay and where um you were talking about uh, girls in tech or you was talking about the initiatives inside of pwc no now i was talking about girls in tech and all what is uh, going on outside of pwc it i'm talking about uh, that luxembourg also has a focus and an interest to increase the number of professionals in technology. Yes. And uh, the gender, uh, it is also taking more relevance. So this is not only for women, this is for everyone. Um, we will see that outside there are every day more opportunities that are Correct. very easy to reach and that are also very um, easy to um, to 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 or that are facilitating, providing an easier way for people that are non-tech to okay. get to learn about these topics. The skills. And if the people want to know more about girls in tech, they have to contact you, or do you have a website, or our next uh, closer event, when is this going to happen, where the people can register? I mean, now is the time uh, for you to say all the things where the people can have a contact. So go ahead. Of course, uh, you can visit Girls in Tech in Luxembourg. Okay. Uh, there, uh, everyone will have the opportunity to register to our association and receive the newsletter. Yes. Uh, it's a monthly newsletter which contains very relevant information about what's going on, some interesting topics about technology. And moreover, all the events that are being organized where you can have the opportunity to home as well network yeah. and and learn yeah fantastic fantastic because this is really an opportunity to grow to support and i wanted to put uh you know to offer uh this channel the podcast and the community that i am building around that is is uh, our community in fact uh, in order to really start to put in all these dots together and i am referring to all these initiatives that are related with women empowerment, because at the end, we are only one. So if we really don't do that together, so I am going to be the one actually calling to, to use this voice, to spread their voice, all the networks related 
with uh, women in Luxembourg or uh, all around the world is uh, I am a bit ambitious related with that, but I really wanted to give that support. And I am so happy, Joliana, that now you are doing that uh, for women's in tech, girls in tech, and uh, really have to give you thank you, not just for being here, for accept my um my invitation because actually uh i'm so happy you you haven't talked about your personal uh, life on detail uh but uh we have been friends for many years since i arrived to luxembourg we met each other uh joliana and i have something in common it's both are colombians <laughs> mm -hmm. living in luxembourg living abroad uh, for many years so i think that that is something there that uh, identified us, make us uh, having this uh, good uh, friendship that uh, help us to do many things and to add value to this environment, uh, to this ecosystem. So thank you very much, Jolie. I don't know if you want to add something else, you want to, to say something else? I want to say something else, of course, thanks to you. I think this is a wonderful initiative. I think the way you are promoting women, uh, it's uh it's going it's having a great impact i can see it and i am super proud to thank be you. in your podcast thank you very much for inviting me well no thank you it's a pleasure to have you here and talk to you soon we hope you have been inspired by this content and join us for future episodes of the Brilliantly Branded Podcast. We will continue exploring the power of branding and the stories behind successful brands. And remember, if you know a woman who has built a successful brand with a unique approach and a story to share, please refer them to our podcast. We will love to learn from their experiences and share their story with our listeners. Stay tuned for more episodes of Brilliantly Branded and don't forget to follow us on Instagram, LinkedIn, on our YouTube channel for more branding insights and women empowerment. Until the next episode, ciao ciao.